Hello guys, welcome back to Netcode App channel. Now in this video, it's going to be a short one and we are going to talk about how to easily test your web API with a public URL using Dev Tunnel CLI. That is a command line. When you create a Mario project or when you create any project at all using Visual Studio and you want to host it, you want to turn your local host or put your local host online so that you can have a public URL which can directly to your local host. Is it possible? Yes, it is. With a new feature in Microsoft uh, Visual Studio, you can now host your local host or local server online. You can have a public URL for your API. Example is what you see on the screen. Like you see, we have a Mari application and that's a login page. We have our API. Now, you know, I've done a video on this. That is how to create or how to consume login API. So if you haven't checked that, I'll link the description or I'll link the, leave the link at the description. So check the description and now click on the link to watch the video, how to create a login form. Now this login form or login application from this uh, Mari project depends on an API to get data to login. So if I provide this name and password or email and password, it has to cross check from the API and now the response of the API determines whether you are logged in or not. So in that video, we are able to log in into our application using the Windows form. That is when you run the application in the desktop version, it works fine. But when it comes to the Android emulator, there's a little bit hindrance here. We can't log in because the Android doesn't recognize localhost as the server for this uh, laptop or this machine, the computer itself. So what it does is it, it doesn't recognize the localhost as a server. So you have an error when you try to log in. And I tried to log in, I saved, let's see, um, when I tried to log in, what happened? Oh, so this is a, a screenshot I saved when um, creating the same app in the video that I did. Now, if you haven't checked it, check the description, it is there. So you can see that the Windows form, uh, that's the Windows desktop app, it will log in successfully. But when it comes to the Android emulator, you can see it tells you that fail to connect to local host 127, that is the, uh, the IP address and that is a port. So this port here is an API port. It is activated, but as you can see from here, it is not working. So in such case, what can we do? That is why this was introduced. That's a dev tunnel. So dev tunnel were introduced and that's going to help us to achieve what you wanted to achieve in that video. And to make this localhost public URL for people to have access to our application. So with the help of the dev tunnel, we are going to connect to our application here and I'm trying to log in. Now I have done that, so let's go through it, then we'll go to the process on how to do it. So there's an API. If I click on user, I can get execute to get all users. So this is the all users that I have here. Now with the tunnel, you see here we have localhost, as you can see from here. That's the localhost, that is the port. Now when I use Quidditch tunnel, you can see that here it is passing my localhost online that can see there is a url or there's an address you see the same port over here but here it is having a dot dot dev tunnels dot ms okay so uh, with this link wherever that you are you can still have access to my localhost using this uh, link because it is it clones my localhost and put it online so you can have access to it but as soon as you click on this button it narrows down to my localhost on my machine here so let's see if we can have the same get method as specified here. So what I can do here is I have to copy this. So this is a dev tunnel. So that is it. Now in here, let me just grab from this API. And I open a new tab. And I'll paste this to so user. Let's see if I'm going to get all the users from the API that I have created. Now, you know, if I close the API, so I have three users here. Now, let's see. 
So we say I have the same user as well. But as you can see, check the reference or the link here, the address. You can see it is a link over here. It is not a local host link as you can see. Now let's try to log in into the application and see what we have now. Now, um, so there is the emulator. Now we have, we're going to use this credentials. Okay, so there's an admin at gmail.com and admin at 123 as a password. Now let's see. So in here, let's open a Visual Studio. So we're going to, this is in debug mode. So we're going to debug it so it gets to the final stage. Now let's see. So I'm going to pass in that's admin at gmail.com. And now the password is admin at 123. So if I click on sign in, let's see what happens. Now it's going to hit on the breakpoint here. Let's see the breakpoint first. So you can see this is the breakpoint I is hitting. Now here we call a service and I will pass in the email and password. So let's click on continue. On. Now here it comes to the dev tunnel link. Now you can see if. Okay. So you can see that we have the dev tunnel link here. And instead of using this local host URL link, I'm using now the dev tunnel link. And that is what the first breakpoint that it is hitting on. So you can see there is a link right here. Now this link is narrowing down to my API. And I'm going to pass in the email and the password. So if I click on this, you can see I'm going to see the email. You see there's the email over here. Now there's also the password that I pass in. So email and the, this is the password. I don't know, one, two, three. So if I click on this, you can see I have this dev tunnel link. Let's click on continue. And it's going to hit on the next breakpoint. Now this breakpoint, if I click on this dev tunnel, you can see I have the link right here and I have the admin at gmail.com and the password attached to. Now it goes to this. Now let's continue on and see what's going to happen. So here, it's going to make a check on database because you know the response of this um, address here has to determine if it is success because you know when you check our controller, we return OK and OK is a status code of 200. So that is success. So if it is success, then you want to store, you want to read the, con uh, the content right here. Let's click on continue on and see. So continue on. Let's wait and see the response of this. All right. So you can see now we are in the new um, URL dev tunnel. I click on continue on. Now let's see the response here. Now we see we are hitting the response. Now we store the response here as an HTTP response message. Now this is an address. Now this address contains the same username that the email and the password. Click on continue and let's see. And if it is success, it returns success, then we must be able to um, get to the next one here. Good. So you can see we are here. Now if I click on this user, this response, you can see that I have the response here. You can see here the status code is for 200 and reasons um, that the phrase is OK. So it means it has returned um, username, that's the data. So if it has returned, then we have to return this to this method because here you can see we are accepting or return a value or an object of user as a model. So if I click on this user, you can see I have the whole list, that's the email, I have the name, and I have password, I have the user ID. Now let's click on continue on. And now we're going to skip this. So now we check if username is equal to now. Is it equal to now? No, it is not. So we're going to continue with this. Then click on continue on. And let's see. So we're going to set it to um, the app page whereby you can have access to it as a global object. Then here we are serializing it over here. So if I click on this, let's see. So currently this is now. But since I click on continue and move to the next one, Let's see now this user details here has been uh, serialized. So we can have it in a JSON format. So if I click on this, like we see, click on view. And now um, JSON visualizer. You can see I have the user ID, name, email, and password. Now you see that we provided only email and password, but we have name and user ID, meaning that it has gotten it from my API. Now if you cross check our API too, you can see from this admin, the user ID is two, the name is administrator. So it means our API has been um, connected and data has been sent to the API to our mobile app. Okay, now let's move on. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Now click on close. So I'm going to click on continue on and let's see. So set it to the global data that we uh, stated and continue on. 
So here we're going to display success. Log in. Now let's see if that works. So I'm going to click on continue. And now let's see with this. So we see success meaning logged in. Now as soon as I'm logged in, what should happen? I have to navigate to the home page. Now let's see. So continue on and I must go to the home page. So we see I'm inside the home page now. So that is a way to consume API um, using the dev panel CLI into your mobile app. That is an Android emulator when uh, developing or when testing it in debugging or debugging mode. So let's see how was I uh, able to get all these for you to also know and now move on with it. Okay. So um, you see when you go to this site, so I'm going to close my PowerShell. I'll close this. Yeah, so it is closed now. Now, when you go to Dev Tunnel, this link, you're gonna see what is Dev Tunnel. So that is a microsoft.com slash this. Maybe I'll put the link over there. So maybe um, when you go there, you can click on this link to see what you need to know about the Dev Tunnel. There are a lot of texts here that you can read about. But I know there's going to be a short video, so I'm not going to go through all. Just have the basics, and if you want to move to advanced one, you can go in and do that. Now, you see, Dev Tunnel allows developers to securely share local web services across the internet. So, enabling you to connect your local development environment with cloud services, share work in progress with colleagues, or aid in building work hooks. Okay, so Dev Tunnel is, a, is for ad hoc testing and development, not for production workload. So if you think that you want to create for production purpose, no, this is for testing purpose for ad hoc. So if you want people to have access to you, your um, local host, your, your app that you're developing to make some changes or to just test it out, you can use this dev panel to do that. Now there are benefits and these are the technologies that you can actually um, go through. We have the host, we have port, connection, internet client, etc. Okay. Now when you click on this quick start, so when you click on this quick start, you're going to read more about this and also this reference. You also have a lot of commands that you can actually read through. So let's see what we can do. So I'm going to click this on the new page. So let's wait for this to get loaded. And now here, let's quick start. So you see we have this create and host a tunnel. So how do you create and host tunnel? The links over here. And now, so we have references that is a command line. So in this command line, you can read more about it. So I just have to provide the link and the description. So you can just click on it and go there straight. Now, if you see from here, we have um, dev tunnel user login, logout, show a lot of these uh, commands here that I can actually go through. Okay, let's go to the quick start. How to get started with it? So come to this link. I also make it available. Now install if you're using Windows, Mac, OS, or Linux, you can install from this, or you can just download the app here. So download it and I'll run it. But if you don't want to download it, then copy this. And as you can see from top here, you can see we need to use PowerShell. So let's go to PowerShell. So I'm gonna let's go to our PowerShell. So Windows, I can just type in PowerShell. So I have my PowerShell here. So I'll launch the PowerShell. And the PowerShell is now launched. So what you can do here is paste this. And I hit on the enter key. Now, when you're done, it's going to run this and download this file for you. If you want to test whether this has been downloaded, then use this. So dot and the backward slash and type in dev tunnel. So if it has been downloaded and installed, you're going to see it over here. So it is saying that required command was not provided. So we have dev tunnel. And as you can see, this is the usage dev tunnel. So you can read more about this. And this is the command that you can actually go through it. This means it has been installed. If you want to do that, dot dev tunnel dash version. And let's see what I can get. So you can see, because I have installed, you can see it's getting me the current version, the, the, the service URL, and all the necessary um, information that I need to know. Okay, so let's clear this. 
Now the next thing to do here is we are going to log in. So first of all, I have to create a Microsoft account, either an Outlook or Hotmail. So if you're not having that, that's the first thing to do. Type in dev tunnel, so that's backward slash dev tunnel. Then type in user login. So user login. Now what you're going to do here is you're going to create a public URL to a local host so that you have access to a local host online. So as you can see from here, it has opened a page whereby I can sign in. Okay. So uh, how do I sign in? Then I'm going to use maybe uh, my account here to sign in. So pass in your account and that's all. So I'm going to just I can just pause this video and I'm going to sign in. All right. So as soon as you sign in, you're going to see this. So login complete. You can now return to the application. Feel free to close this browser tab. So I'm going to feel free and I'm going to what? Close it over here. Yeah. So now let's go back to the PowerShell. And as soon as I go back to the PowerShell, you can see that I'm signing here. I have my, um, you can see I have my email over, over there, that's Microsoft account. I have it right here and um, I am logged in here. Okay, so if you want to see the current tunnel that I have, you can just use in this dot backward slash, then dev tunnel, then list. So this is going to list the current um, tunnel that I have. If I'm not having any tunnel, it's going to say no tunnel to then create a tunnel. So let's wait while it gets at. Now you see here, no tunnels found. So how do you create tunnel? Now in creating tunnel, there are two ways. By that way, the first way is you can just log in. How else you log in? You create a tunnel. Now the tunnel that you create, although it is created, but if I want to log in, I have to provide the credential. One thing is I can create um, anonymous tunnel. Anonymous tunnel here means if any app wants to connect to my API, it doesn't necessarily need any login. Just get a link and boom, you are done. So let's create that tunnel. And to create that anonymous tunnel, we're going to use the keyword anonymous in it. But first of all, we have to run our API and then grab the port. So you can see here, if I run this API, my API it is still, let's see if it is still working. Yeah, so it is still working. Now you can see if we're, the port here it is 7173. So I'm going to keep that. And now uh, in here, I'm going to say that to create an, uh, the tunnel, we have to provide the port. Okay. And also provide a set to an anonymous. So we can use it in any, we can use it anywhere. So we say dot backward slash, then dev tunnel. Okay. Then type in host because you want to host this and we need P. P stands for port. So port, my port is seven, one, seven, three or four. That's seven, three. Yeah. Aside from that, what you have to do here is dash dash passion protocol. So protocol here, I want it to be secured. So HTTPS, that is our protocol. The next thing that you have to do here is to specify it as anonymous. So we say that's that then allow that's anonymous. Okay. That is all that you need to create an anonymous, um, tunnel. When you're done, click on the enter key. Now let's wait for our tunnel to get created. You're going to have a special link and this link is going to link out to a local host and you can use this link anywhere, anytime as far as this is on. Now you see you have ready to accept connection for this tunnel. So this is a tunnel ID. Now as you can see from here, hosting port for 7173 at. So that is our tunnel now. So let's grab this. So let's grab it from here up to this. Or I can even just grab from this. Yeah, so let's grab this. Now let's come to our API. So in here, let me just close this and launch a new one. So with this, I'm going to paste it here. 
Okay. And I know our API here, the controller is what API slash user. So I'm going to pass in API slash user. Now let's see. So this is going to get at the whole list. Like you see, you're about to connect to a developer tunnel at this. So this is a tunnel link. Click on continue on to get the tunnel ready. As soon as I click continue, see what happens here. Now you see we have client SSH and now here port forwarding service. So the channel ID is zero, and now this is the local host and this is the port. Now you can see we have the data here. I can spe specify so slash login. That is the route I'm going to provide to so admin at gmail.com. Then the password is admin at one two three. Click on enter. And you're going to have fully the data for that specific user. I can also pass in the same data here. So gmail and now here is going to be user user that i'm going to pass in here as user so now to run this and you're going to have user here so we see that you have a public url over here and it is narrowed down to our local host so we can now use this so you know what we're going to do here let's copy it. let's grab this and now we copy this we go back to our page here now we have created this service or this app already so if you have any um application that's a mary app at all and you want to just get the data from the api you can use this the only thing that you have to do here is just make a change from the url that is it is demanding as an api call that is it but if you're not having anything at all, you can just check this video, check it beneath the description, click on the link, and just follow it up to this end. And now, aside from watching that video, you can just continue with this to have the uh, the data received or retrieved from the API into your Mari app project application. Now, go to let's go to the view model. So this is the view model. Now, see this view model, we have the button clicked, uh, the event wide over here. Now, this is going to be our service. So the login server, that is where we specify our dev tunnel link. Now we see with that dev tunnel, we use the local host and this works perfectly in running this in a window machine. That is uh, for Windows desktop. But when using them later as an Android or maybe iOS as well, we need to improve it. So all that I copied, I'm going to paste it within here. That's a new tunnel that has been given by Microsoft. So I'm going to pass it right here. Now you see that in an API, slash user slash login i pass in my email and my password so if i check the api here you can see from the swagger i have my api user login email and password and that is exactly what i'm going to do because you know i am doing data directly from this this uh um, asymmetric okay now this is done what i can do here is i just have to save this so i'll just save this so if i save this is going to load reload my application and now let's see if this is going to work so let me click on this to restart this app so let's keep our api active so this also Let's keep this active. So I'm going to get this data to keep it active. Now, as soon as I get data here, it's going to keep this active. So the connection is having established. And now we wait while our app gets restarted. So it's going to restart this app. I'm going to open this app over here. Then we're going to log in. Now, when logging, this is a new tunnel. Okay, so the old one that I use, it is not existing anymore. So this is a new one and that's what we are using. So the app is going to restart. Then let's see. So I'm going to test this to keep mine active. My swagger to keep it active. So I don't get any error in doing it. Because I don't want to waste time here. Keep it active all the time. Now let's see if our app is ready. Yeah, so almost ready. So deploying to this. And yeah, so it's going to launch now. And we can now log in. 
So as you can see from here, I have this. And that is the, the breakpoint. So we're going to load from the breakpoint and see from all this angle. So let's see. So let's go to IP and let's try to use a different login. Okay, so we have three logins here. From our dev tunnel, we have these three login. Where is the login over here? Let's check it out. Okay, so I'm going to just call the user controller to get the three logins. Okay, so these three logins. What I'm going to do here is let's use this. The first one that is for the queues. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to log in over here. So I go to my app. Then the name, the email I'm going to provide here. Let's see. So let's type in. So that is queues at gmail.com. Then the password here it is use at one two three so let's open our visual studio here now we're going to click to see the breakpoint if it's going to make success or not so i'll click on sign in now the first breakpoint that's going to hit here might be this yeah so we have our email we have our password that's where we're going to go so continue on and Let's we want to see the next one. So it's going to hit on this. We're going to pass in the email and password. Okay. So this is the whole URL. Click on next. And we're going to move on to this. Generate this. Create the, the base URL to the dev tunnel and the, add the credential that we provided. So you can see that we have the dev tunnel and we have everything intact here. So if I click here, it is now for now. But with this, let's see. So here provides the whole thing together. Now let's click on continue. And I'm going to return. So we're going to check from, they're going to execute this command using the HTTP response and store it as an object over here. So in case the response here, it is okay. It is uh, uh, 200. Then we're going to come to this, but in case it is not, it's going to skip that. Because when you check our controller, the login controller here, that's the user controller. If you check this, you can see that we are returning if in case you have data you return okay and okay the phrase here it is 200 that's the code and the phrase is what okay so okay means 200 if we're going to return 404 so in case it is okay then we're going to move on but in case it is um not found that is 404 so let's see the status here if you're going to be okay or 404 so let's see all right now let's see the status. So the code here it is what? So you can see it is returning. Let's see the content. Response. So you can see it is returning what? Let's see. Yeah. So re uh reason phrase is okay. And the status code is 200. So it is returning 200. Click on continue. So and here it's data is found. Then we return the data to this method. Now we are calling this method to in the view model so we say that if the user here we call the method over here and we say if the user here is not called to now they want to set this as a public variable so we can have access to it at the time and let's see so here let's move on with this continue on. and now here we are going to serialize it so that we can pass it here so we I click on this view and now JSON, as we did earlier on, now we have the data here. Good. So, continue on. Now it's still in the debugging mode. So we are still logging in. Continue on. Now here, it means to fit a next point and that's going to stay success. So click continue on. And now let's see. So we have logged in. I click on OK. And the next one that I have to do here is we're going to move to the last one. That is to navigate us to the page. So continue on. And now uh, I'm inside the home page now. So we are logging. That's right. So you can see it's very interesting to use it.
Now we're going to also run this, but before we run that, we run the desktop app to also test it. We have to change this. So um, let's break up this. Okay, so let's terminate this. Close this. All right, and now here, let's choose install this Android emulator. Let's choose Window Machine. Okay, so we can now choose this Window Machine. And now let's run this window. So let's run this and see. So if I click on this, let's also run it. Let's keep our API this active. So connection established. Let's execute this too to keep it active. So let's wait while the app gets loads. All right, so our window app is also ready. And now let's log in. So let's use a different login account here. Or let's use the same one. So you can just grab this. Then let's paste it here. Let's grab the password. Let's paste this here. Click on sign in and I'm also going to perform the same thing. So hit on the same point. So continue on, continue on, continue on, continue on. Now we see it is reading it. So we're going to hit on this point. Good. As I started. Now there is uh, the status code is 200. So return the user. You check it is not to now. Set the private variable. Yeah, it's realize it and add it or set it. So display message right here as login. Continue on. Now we have login. So and continue on. And now we go to the home page. Now we see if I click on this, you will see I have this logout. Right. Now I can just look and I can see we have the login as and I have the name displayed over here. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you here is when you go to the partial, where we have our connections created, we have two links. The first one is the tunnel, the second one is the inspector. There's no police inspector. <laughs> so the uh, this inspector, as you can see from here, this is an, um, an inspect it at. So this is an inspector. We can now grab this. Let's go to our page here. Let's create a new tab. Paste it. Now let's do this an inspector. So what are we going to do? All um coming in all errors or all events coming in here. So you have to also still sign in as well. So I'm going to sign in. Then you see. Yeah. So as soon as you provide your credentials, as you see, you are not logging now. Now this is also a network tab. So all calls that get called or all methods that get called are going to be shown over here. So this network here determines the flow, the flow of um, calls that you make from the API to the app. It could be your Blazor application. It could be Mavi application or it could be any application after that you want to create with it using Visual Studio. So let's see. Now I'm, I'm making a call to this. So let's see. I'll make a call to this. Now, if I come here, you can see we have a new call and that's a user. So this user is a new call that we are getting. Now, if I go to preview, you can see we have the whole list of new call. So it's the same as the, de uh, the developer tool in the browser. Now, if I grab this, if I grab this, or if I pass in um, login and I pass in admin at gmail.com and I pass in password I'm going to catch the same method also over here so let's see we see I have the same method 
and add the data capture. Okay, so um, that is it, and that is a nice way to use the dev tunnel. It has a bunch of codes, or you can learn about the feature that you can learn about. So go to the link, I'll leave it there. Click on it to read more about it if you have time. But actually, the business one is what we've, we've gone through how to create an animals um, link, which narrows it down to your API and how to make it or use it in your Mari or Blazor or whatever app that you're, you're creating. As far as it is demanding or it is using an API call, you know how to use that. So, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I also enjoyed it um, doing it with you guys. And hopefully, if you like what I'm doing, just give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to comment. And if you have any issue too, let us know. Thank you and take care of yourself. I'm going to see you or catch you up or see you. Catch you up in the next video.